Okay. Good morning once again. Warm welcome to all of you, to the in-person students, the online students, as well as those who uh, who will be watching this at the e-learning at a later point of time. I hope all of you all are doing well. Yeah, we can uh, we can talk in in this session. I know we're not a lot of us are not in person, but we can uh, converse and have a conversation even over here and discuss questions as well. Okay, all right. So um, to begin with, uh, we've been looking at uh, some of the elements in uh, marriage, and uh, we went through a couple of them. We started with uh, communication. We did how we could be uh, a good team. Um, we looked at uh, conflict resolution. We looked at um, house home management and sex and sexuality. And today uh, would be one one in the last of that um, section on uh, elements of marriage is to how do we establish healthy boundaries sorry the second last the next week we will be doing spiritual growth and nourishment also so the second last is the how do we establish healthy boundaries so if you're following with me in the book it is uh, uh, chapter 13 um, in your books and uh, the, it, it's titled as boundaries okay all right um, so uh, now I think what we need to really understand is even though um, uh, a young man and a young woman or or a man and a woman are married uh, it it does not uh, keep them away from having other kind of affections to other people so it does not insulate them from uh, having uh, maybe an emotional uh, and a sexual affection to someone else outside uh, of the marriage or of the opposite sex. So uh, any person, whether it be a married man or a married woman, can feel uh, a sense of attraction to another woman uh, and, um, and vice versa also. So we do, we do see that uh, all of these kinds of affections that build outside of the marriage generally um, can turn to be a lot, uh, can turn into having a lot of difficulty. And uh, what happens is it's not that people intentionally decide to get into um, a different relationship, but then it happens... Um, it, it begins in a very, very, uh, maybe a, a very normal, casual interaction that's there. Uh, and then it begins to build at a point of time. So generally, people don't get in with an intention to get into maybe a wrong kind of affair. But what happens is, as a result of... Uh, um, constant interactions, constant communication, it builds into a... Uh, into something like an affair or an extramarital relationship. So uh, how how it begins, I mean, we're going to be looking at some of the progression of it, but it's generally casual. And then, you know, there's a lot more of time that's spent. And then there's a lot of emotional investment that takes place. And uh, and, and as a result of which, it, it, it becomes uh, a lot more, um, intense with with probably even physical and sexual involvement that's there. So we do see uh, and we know that the the in the if some of this that happens, it can be extremely um, uh, a, a place of brokenness for both uh, both the husband and the wife. And of course, it, within the marriage and the unity of the marriage in itself, it can cause a whole lot of concerns and a whole lot of issue. So we need to understand, and why is it important that we look at this uh, chapter on boundaries is because we must uh, know that marriage does not come with an automatic self-protection. You are not uh, just, all because you're married, uh, those, those emotional connections or the attractions does not shut down. You know, it, it can still be there. But uh, so... Knowing that it's you're being preemptive, you're being preventive, and knowing that uh, it's important uh, for us to guard our marriages. Um, and how do we do that? We guard it in the way that we conduct ourselves, in the way that we 
um, uh, we guard our minds, we guard our the way that we feel, and we guard our affections towards um, others and, and, and potential people that may be there. So we need to understand that we nobody uh, is immune. Sorry, nobody is immune to these uh, to these attacks, these these kind of uh, issues that may come about, and we must ensure that we. Um, we keep ourselves protected so that we we do recognize when there is danger, when we are in a place of vulnerability, and how is it that we can protect our marriages. So this is this is what we are going to be be looking at. And the Bible, uh, in fact, has a lot to say about um, how we need to be how we need to guard ourselves how we need to guard our minds and our affection so we'll take we'll take um, some of the scriptures that's there on on that uh, first page of your um, of that chapter in proverbs chapter 2 verses 16 to 22 would someone like to read that please proverbs chapter 2 verses 16 to 22 proverbs 2 16 to 22 wise friends will rescue you from the temptress the smooth talking seductress who's faithless to the husband she married years ago never gave a second thought to her promises before god her whole way of life is doomed every step she takes brings her closer to hell no one who joins her company ever comes back ever sets foot on the path to real living so join the company of good men and women keep your feet on the on the tried and true path it's the men who walk straight who will settle this land. The women with integrity who will last here. The corrupt will lose their life. The dishonest will be gone for good. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Um, uh, could someone read uh, the, the fourth verse of that? Proverbs chapter 7, verses 21 to 26 also. wisdom as your sister and insight as your closest friend they will keep you away from other men's wives from women with seductive words proverbs chapter 7 verses 21 to 26 21 to 26 the next one uh, lucy yeah. so she tempted him with her charms and he gave in a smooth talk 26 verse, right, sister? She has been the ruin of many men and caused the death of too many to count. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to read 21 to 26, okay? Proverbs chapter 7, verses 21 to 26. So she tempted him with her charms and he gave in to her smooth talk. Suddenly he was going with her like an ox on the way to be slaughtered like a deer practicing, dancing into a trap. When, where an arrow would pierce its heart, he was like a bird going into a net. He did not know that his life was in danger. Now then, sons, listen to me. Pay attention to what I say. Do not let such a woman win your heart. Don't go wandering after her. She has been the ruin of many men and cause the death of too many to count. All right, so through these verses, uh, all of these, and we haven't um, looked at all of all the verses, but it's important to, uh, you know, it, when, you, when you focus on what uh, Solomon is saying through these verses, he's saying this one thing, it is to be careful. It is to be careful about, um, about uh, the, the person, or it, it, over here it says the seductress, in fact, the one who who is who entices, or who lures, or who brings uh, one's attention away from from his own to something else. All right. So that's that's what uh, uh, the, the proverbs is talking about about being careful about the one who can entice you into sin, entice you into something uh, that is immoral or that is, uh, in, when you're looking at seductress, it is about sexual immorality. So when, uh, if, we, if we are to look in our current world, um, you know, in, in, in uh, workplaces or uh, in general, in the, in the general, in general situations, you will see that 
um, a lot of this is very prevalent uh, of how of how I'm sorry just give me a minute please Apologies, I'm so sorry. Yeah. So um, what it's saying over here is that in in our uh, urban setting, in in what we are experiencing, there are a lot of um, uh, affairs or extramarital uh, situations that take place. People are uh, unfaithful to one another. Uh, there may be, um, uh, in fact, in some of the corporates that you see, or in workplaces that you will see, there are exchanges um, of partners that happen. So this is something that we see is on the rise. And in fact, even in, um, in, in the media or in the entertainment, these are some of the things that are uh, quite prevalent. And uh, you know, there are movies about it. There are stories about it. There are shots about it, and a lot of this seem, is seemingly to be uh, to be accepted, and that's that's exactly what uh, you know the, the 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 scripture here is saying that um, there can be people who are open and who are willing to really engage with with someone else outside of marriage in. Um, uh, in an emotional space as well as in a in a sexual space, um, uh, e even with the kind of um, you, you know the apps that you see, there are there are multiple dating apps that have come where people <clears throat> register themselves into it and look for for other partners who may be who may be available, despite the fact of 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 them being within a marriage and being in a family setting. So these are some things that you would see, and these. Uh, these show you that they are these are explicit ways of how um, uh, these relationships uh, are, are being endeared and uh, are are being solicited. So, uh, what is it? What is it? Uh, uh, what is the word that's given here? It's to be careful. It's to always be on guard. Uh, we do also see that you know um, a lot of times these relationships are may not be long term ones it may be just like for a season or maybe for a for a for a one night so all of this is what we see uh, seems prevalent and seem seems even acceptable over, over here um, it's it's also true that there may be certain people who are just looking for someone to attack or someone to uh, um, you know, to get into an adulterous relationship with some, with with uh, with another person, and we see that happening. You know, in in different kind of kind of settings. So, the wisdom that's given here is to be on guard, to to take care, to take the measure, to take the preventive measure without even getting into any of uh, you know, just not even moving into the threshold of one one of this. Um, we look at uh, uh, another verse on Proverbs chapter 9, verses 17 to 18. Can somebody read that, please? Proverbs 9, 17 to 18. Anybody can just unmute and read. Stolen water is sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant, but he does not know that the dead are there, that our guests are in the depths of hell. OK, so here, when you're looking at uh, an adulterous relationship, like we did, like I did mention earlier, um, a person doesn't get into an adulterous relationship uh, all of a sudden. Uh, it's something that happens uh, slowly. And you see that it is a slow process of, it is a process. It's not, it's not something that happens all of a sudden. And um, uh, uh, over here, it, it talks about about it, and it says, "Stolen water is, is sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant." It it looks as if it's it's okay and it's enticing, but nevertheless, it's something that moves into a slow uh, process of uh, an immoral relationship. So, how does it begin? So, it generally begins when um, uh, it, 
it, it generally begins with probably just an initial thought about, um, you know, that um, I, I guess it, it also begins when, when the connections between two people, that is a husband and a wife, aren't as strong. And then um, you're engaging with different people in a workplace or in a different setting. And then the, the it starts with a thought saying that, OK, you know, this person is so much more kinder or so much more open or so much more understanding than my spouse. So that's how it initially begins to to have a thought, to engage in a thought that says that um, the other person seems to be a lot more nicer or a lot more kinder. And then it moves in to a, uh, to a regular interaction with the person, You're looking at seeing how uh, maybe going out for coffee a couple of times or having um, going out for lunch or you know just just maybe uh, and, and being in the same meeting together um, for multiple periods of time, observing one another. So it becomes it becomes the interactions becomes a lot more, and the the time that is being spent um, is a, is a lot more. And when that happens, the more the person is convinced that uh, you know the the spouse is uh, the. the the friend or, or the person in question seems to be a lot more understanding or seems to be a lot more uh, engaging. And so then, then it begins um, uh, more time is being spent. And that's when the emotions, the affections begin to develop. You feel a lot more emotionally connected to one another. So what started off as a very casual, um, maybe just a connection or an association, finally becomes starts to develop into something that's a lot more um, emotional. There's a lot more emotional affection. Maybe uh, a lot of things are being shared with the other person. There is, there's probably, um, uh, you know, the life situation that's being shared. And once that takes place, then you're moving into something called as an entanglement. The entanglement is, is you know, uh, Think of it this way, you know, when you look at yarn or when you look at thread, when you when you get two pieces of thread and mix them up together, what happens? It's very difficult to tease one out one from the other. So the so the entanglement is a lot more greater because there is conversations about their personal thoughts, their experiences. There's a lot more of um, uh, interactions that takes place. Maybe it's phone calls, maybe it's one-on-one -on -one meetings, it's more coffee, it's more lunch. And so as a result, that uh, entanglement keeps growing. And this is where uh, it, it, begins to, uh, it begins to build. And there is, a, there is the um, uh, uh, increasing need to keep it secret because um, you know, so, that, so that there isn't a doubt on anyone's mind. So that, that becomes that's where it moves into that place of of secrecy and then from there uh, it, it 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 it's not too far away that it moves into something that's more physical or or it becomes a sexual uh, attraction and then is when people fall into sexual sin so when you look at this uh, process it starts off as a casual friendship it moves into uh, an emotional affection then it could get into an entanglement. And then uh, that's what leads to physical attraction as well as sexual involvement. So you see that it it slowly moves from, from what was seemed normal to that which has which is um, a quite quite intense and quite outside of what God would desire. So it's a it's a slow process. And and to think that uh, uh, you know that that one can be careful, or you know, telling yourself that you know it, this won't happen to me, is a dangerous thing, and that's why we look into seeing how is it that we can maintain some of these boundaries and and keep some of these fences. So let's look at why do people fall into um, these kind of entanglements, and and I'm going to open this out to y'all because just just to have some engagement over here. So why do you think people get into um, fall into these kind of emotional entanglements or these kind of um, relationships. What what are some of your thoughts? You can please unmute and speak, or you know even put it down on the chat. That that's that's fine. 
seeking support from out from outside when they are not getting it from the family the love and affection okay wonderful yeah so you seeking support or seeking um emotional care from someone outside because because you're probably missing it out uh, in your family or in your marriage okay that's one all right what else in case the person uh, either either per, either of the person uh, means he's not uh, means he can't express his emotional care like in that situation how how uh, they have to take in sorry i didn't i didn't follow can you repeat that if when they're not able to express what either emotion of the, either, either of the spouse uh huh some people they'll not be able to give that emotional support needed okay all right yeah so we Thanks. we'll yeah we we'll, we will talk about that uh, i think what you're saying is when people don't feel loved or when people no, don't not feel loved but they can't express uh, means taking uh, giving a support uh, during the loss of someone else in the family they can't okay. extend that support or emotional support like okay all right so are you saying that's one of the reasons why people fall into this uh... no, that is not the reason but ah. that can that situation also lead people to be away like yeah so when you're saying that uh. when you're saying that they are not having an emotional connect it basically means that they feel very distant one with another that when someone needs the other when one spouse needs the other person emotionally or when they're going through a difficulty or even when they're going through some part of joy or some part of happiness uh the other person is unavailable these are all um, the emotional distance that you see yes so that that is another uh, place where you're not meeting your emotional needs and as a result you feel uh, distant so you're right so that that is that's again one one reason all right anything else other students my on um, my in person students you would have generally spoken a lot if i was there come on what are the other other things that we can think of so sometimes people are looking for this uh, a partnership or relationship on a purpose sister they are uh, yes they want deliberately to have more than one relationship this is okay. just uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so so that's right sometimes people just um, are looking uh, uh, you know i've i've heard this it, it's it's boring to be with one person so then you know it, it it makes life a lot more interesting and yes that's why sometimes people do look in and uh, it becomes sometimes like a pattern it's uh, it's an it's a it's an unhealthy pattern of looking for new relationships because they're bored with uh, with with that which is already existing yes that's that's the reason all right what else what else come on there are so many of us over here and i'm sure we can think of one or two more okay i think diksha says expectations yeah when expectations aren't met yes that's true when um when uh, maybe it's expectations of um, uh you know certain roles that a person needs to play that a husband or the wife needs to play those expectations are in met and so uh, there is there is a sense of distance or, or a huge disappointment that comes as a result all right okay so um there may be other things just uh, uh, a general um you know uh, two people not really spending enough of time to build their marriage emotionally to connect with one another to find Uh, ways of uh, building their life together uh, both are leading very distant uh, separate individual lives that sometimes can can cause people to fall into a relationship like this um there could be even uh, past relationships that uh, that that maybe one of the people have not gotten over of so it's the the earlier affections that they have not dealt with or you know the connections are still kept this 
uh, affects a person. This can make a person vulnerable into an extramarital affair. Um, sometimes it's also people with uh, with few personal values about what it means to have a marriage or have a committed relationship uh, to be to be committed to one person and one person only that in itself can cause uh, uh, people to fall into this um, also um, uh, just being uh, just just also not having a commitment to to what god says and his word that in itself can can create this sometimes it's uh, uh, it can be as a result of a um, uh, like a revenge for example, if there is a one spouse who falls into this sin, the other spouse, in order to to show the other person what it means to have that much that kind of a pain, actually goes in purposely and falls into a uh, extramarital affair, and then uh, you know, uh, hoping to teach the other person a lesson, and then becomes extremely connected with the other. So, so there are many many reasons why people do do get into these kind of uh, situations or um, or extramarital um, situations, right? So it's important to understand this, even as we as we are also looking into this. All right. So what what is the caution that we need to have? It is uh, as we said, you know, uh, what we looked at in Proverbs is to beware, to be careful, to be on guard. And when are some of the times that we should look at being on guard? And this is a lesson that we'd like to take from. David, from what we saw uh, in what happened to King David and how his relationship with Bathsheba took place. All right, so what are we supposed to be on guard? So let's read uh, 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 to 4. If, if one of you can read that, please. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 to 4. Sister, anybody else yes. would like to speak? go ahead, Lucy? Everyone, I think, is falling asleep. Lucy, please go ahead. When that time of year came around again, the anniversary of the Ammonite aggression, David dispatched Joab and his fighting men of Israel in full force to destroy the Ammonites for good. They laid siege to Rabbah, but David stayed in Jerusalem. One late afternoon, David got up from taking his nap and was strolling on the roof of the palace. From his vantage point, from his vantage point on the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was stunningly beautiful. David sent to ask about her and was told, "Isn't this Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam and wife of Uriah the Hittite?" David sent his agents to get her. After she arrived, he went to bed with her. Then she returned home. So we can't hear you. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. So what do we see here is um, when we when uh, we know David as he was known as a man after God's own heart. We do see that we we have seen the history of David how uh, he was so devoted to God. There were things that he did that really set him apart as a man of God's own heart and the way that the Lord also connected to him. So we see that uh, uh, even, even through his journey in life from, from a shepherd boy to, a, to, to being uh, chased after by Saul uh, and then moving into being, being a king, right? So we, we see the, um, the accomplishments that he faced as the king of Israel. And in fact, um, in... Uh, 2 Samuel 8 verses 13 to 15, it also talks about, um, about David and, and the victories that he won. And I'll just read that. David became even more famous when he returned from killing 18,000 Edomites in Salt Valley. He set up military camps throughout Edom and the people there became his subjects. The Lord made David victorious everywhere. We can see that how how the Lord had his eye upon David. David ruled over all Israel and made sure that his people were always treated fairly and justly. So you, you can see of how David was, was loved by the Lord. He loved the Lord. 
David was uh, was totally uh, loved by his subjects and all of Israel and all of the, all of people. Um, it it was the best time in his uh, tenure then, right? He was going in for battles and he was he was uh, having a whole lot of victory happening over there. So he was at a at an all time high. He was uh, he was at the best time of his his career, right? He he did he did really really well. But it was at this point of time that we see something goes wrong. Uh, and we'll just look at verse 1, 2 Samuel 11, verse 1. It says, when that time of the year came again, um, uh, in you know, where, where it says, uh, uh, where all the fighting men of Israel were in full force, which means it was that time of war. And the whole of David's army was out in battle they were busy they they had work to do and what do we see david doing but david stayed back in jerusalem he stayed back when it was war when when things were happening what did david do he stayed back and that's when uh, we do find that you know he he sees Bathsheba, and then he takes her commits adultery and uh, in order to cover up that he he kills her. Um, he kills her husband Uriah. So, what is this? What does this show us? Uh, it's important that we are. We need to be on guard or be careful, not just at times when we are going through significant crisis. That is when we may be emotionally depleted or when things may be going wrong. Uh, from the lesson of David, we also see that it is important for us to be at guard when things are at, are at its best when success is uh, is uh, is all over us when when things are going well uh, there there doesn't seem to be any kind of an issue so think of it this way it's a time when someone thinks that they don't need god because everything is okay or at a time when they do desperately need god but don't feel that god is around both these times are things that uh, um, you know, we, we we read as a lesson that we need to uh, we need to keep ourselves guarded uh, guarded from. So these are both crises as well as triumphs. Now, uh, what why is why is it that we need to be on guard at this point of time? Because it's during these times that sometimes uh, our judgment is not very um, uh, is is not very um, uh, is not very clear. It's 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 quite kind of poor, and we tend to be extremely emotional in the way that we make certain decisions. So uh, that's the reason why we need to be careful about how we manage things, because it's when we are really uh, um, filled with a lot of emotion is when our decisions sometimes become extremely. Uh, extremely wrong, or we make choices that we tend to regret regret later. So that's why we need to be on double guard, so that we we are uh, we keep ourselves aware when there is a time of crisis or when there is a time of success, because it is that um, decision that we take during that emotional. Uh, high or that emotional low that brings up to a place of trouble and which can have a whole lot of um, uh, difficult consequences in our lives. Okay, so th that's the caution. The first caution is to be on guard, is to be careful during the times of a crisis or during times of of success. What's the next caution that that's uh, that proverbs bring to us? Again, it's a be on guard. And what is this uh, this uh, this guarding calling us it is to um not to um, uh, trade things that the, uh, you know um things that feel good for the moment as against that which uh, you know that that which you may have as enduring so it is not trading something that uh, that feels impulsive. Oh, this feels good. I really need to have this, or uh, it's an affection that you that you sense as against that which can be long lasting. So it says, in, in in other words, it brings. It says here, don't trade 
enduring intimacies, that is intimacy that can last for a long time for cheap thrills, for something that is lasts for a moment. And that's that's really of pittance. It's not, it, it isn't even of much value. So let's just take, um, just read that. This is a long scripture of uh, Proverbs chapter 5, verses 1 to 23. Can somebody else read it? Give Lucy a break and would someone else like to read it, please? Okay, now I'll have to start calling out names. Uh, Mom, tell me Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 5, verses 1 to 23. Okay. My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard description, and thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But her hand is bitter as warm wood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell, lest thou shoulders ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou cast not know them. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. Lest thou give thine honour unto others, and thy yours unto the cruel, Let strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labours be in the house of the strangers. And thou mourn at the last, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed, and say, How have I hated instruction, and my heart despised reproof, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my mine ear to them that instructed me. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. Drink waters out of thine own cistern and running waters out of thine own well. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad, abroad and rivers of waters in the streets. Let them be only thine own and not strangers with thee. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy mouth. Let her be as a loving hind and pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thy at all times and be thou ravished always with her love. And why will thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger. Sister, not audible. I'm sorry. So sorry. OK. Yeah, there were three more verses, but I think that's fine. You, you've read what we wanted. Thank you, uh, Deepu. Right, so when you look at this chapter, what does this chapter show you? It is showing you um, a comparison or a, or a contrast of two things. Uh, if you look at verse 18, it says, your fresh flowing fountain, the fresh flowing fountain uh, described here is that um, or the spring water that is described here is that which is um, which is the spouse or in these terms it's it's talking to a young man all right it's it's his own wife so enjoy the wife you married so that is the fresh flowing fountain as against um, what you would see uh, in verse 20 is um, the the why would you trade enduring intimacies for cheap thrills with a whore? 
So it's talking, it's bringing about a difference between how you are blessed with that which is fresh flowing. It's your own spring water. It's what is your own. So verse 15, it says, drink from your own rain barrel, draw water from your own spring fed well. Now, these are all poetic, poetic terms. But what it what it's meaning to say is um, this is where your your intimacy should lie. This is where uh, what is permanent for you is is what you get your satisfaction from as against trading it with something that is uh, momentary that can leave you completely broken and completely uh, ruined. Um, uh, th that that's something that's also cheap. It's called that's why it says it's a cheap thrill. It's something for a period of time. It, it's like this. Think of it like this. You know, when you're hungry, um, you have a great meal that is wait that's there waiting for you. But then you destroy it with all little little knickknacks, right? Little maybe small chocolate or small fried stuff when the actual good stuff is is waiting for you. So think of it. Think of it like that. So the enduring intimacy with uh, with the spouse is likened to that of that spring water or that fresh flowing fountain. So what is God saying? What is the instruction here? Is not to uh, not to enjoy or not to trade that which may be momentary, but to to wait for uh, for that which continues to be enduring. So um, again, the the proverb is is moving into. Uh, telling this young man, and, and this is where the last three verses, I'll just read that. Uh, Mark well that God doesn't miss a move you make. He's aware of every step you take. The shadow of your sin will overtake you. You'll find yourself stumbling all over yourself in the dark. Death is the reward of an undisciplined life. Your foolish decisions trap you in a dead end. So it's saying anything that is uh, that you engage in that is momentary and gives you the cheap thrill, what is the consequence of it? It is death or destruction, basically. And your decisions trap you at a dead end. You are you're at a place where it, it can lead you into a whole lot of trouble. So that's that's the next caution that's giving. So the first caution that we, we read was to be, be on guard, both at the time of crisis as well as uh, triumph and now it is to not uh, trade what may be permanent into something that may be small and something that is temporary. Now, uh, it, when we look at um, again proverbs and proverbs has a whole lot to talk about this. It talks about what are some of the consequences of adultery, and in your next session uh, section, it looks uh, it it tells you about what what. Uh, what happens when someone gets into adultery? So let's let's read through that scripture also. Uh, it's Proverbs chapter six, verses twenty three to thirty five. Proverbs chapter six, twenty three to thirty five. Can somebody read that, please? For the commandments is the lamp, and the law or law a light, reproofs of instructions or the way of life, to keep you from the evil woman. From the fluttering tongue of a sedu sedu uh, seducess, do not lust after her beauty in your heart, nor let her allure you with her eyelids. For by means of a harlot, a man is reduced to a, a crust of bread, and an adulteress will prey upon uh, his precious life. Can a man take fire to his bosom? and his clothes not be burned? Can one talk on hot coals, and his feet not be seed? So is he who goes into his neighbor's wife, whoever touches her shall not be innocent. People do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy himself when he is starving. Yet, when he is found, he must restore sevenfold, he may have to give up all the substance of his house. Whoever commits adultery with a woman lacks understanding. He who does so destroys his own soul. Wounds and dishonor he will get, and his reproach will not be wiped away. For jealousy is a husband's fury. Therefore, 
he will not spare in the day of vengeance vengeance thank you thank you Deepu. right so what we look at uh, verse um, 32 here uh, verse 32 it says so what are the consequences of adultery although you know and, and if you look at the the previous couple of verses it's actually uh, 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 the uh, he's building the case towards what are some of the consequences that can happen and uh, verse 32 is where it talks about it says um, whoever commits adultery with a woman lacks understanding and in this uh, version of the message bible it says it's a brainless act which means you've lost your head uh, you're, you're not even thinking about what you're what you're doing so it is it's something it's it's someone who lacks understanding who who is not using wisdom and then it goes on to say uh, it's soul destroying which means uh, he who gets into adultery is actually destroying his soul what does the soul uh, consist of the mind the emotions um, and the will that means you're destroying your mind. You're getting getting into adultery, and then this is going to actually capture you back. It's going to haunt you um, for what you have done. Maybe it's out of the guilt or the the betrayal that that happens. It's going to destroy your soul. It uh, then it talks about it is self destructive. It's or uh, in verse um, verse thirty three in the NKJV, it talks about how you're going to get wounds and dishonor. You will get wounds and dishonor he will get and his reproach will not be wiped away what does it mean that you're inviting wounds for yourself you're inviting uh, a place of of lacking respect lacking um, uh, honor and uh, it's something that will not be wiped away you you will be stuck with something like this right it can it can get stuck into your mind it can be stuck to your reputation so it's talking about how adultery is lacks understanding a person who does it lacks understanding it becomes uh, uh, destroying to the soul it becomes destructive to oneself where you're filled with that dishonor and filled with that kind of a reputation that will not go away so the Bible is actually talking about the seriousness about uh, moving into a space of adultery, and uh, and I think that's that's an example for us to understand that uh, you cannot get away with something like that. You may get away probably on a on on a social level, but then when it comes to your relationship with God and when it comes to your own conscience and and how it affects you it's something that can be it can be very serious and it, it's something that um, can be very destroying to our to our minds or to our bodies or to our souls and our spirit okay so that's the that's what the bible talks about it and um it's it's important again you know even as uh, we in marriage when you're when you're discussing especially with with uh, premarital sessions to help people see God's word about this, that uh, it's not something that you can go out unscathed. It's something that you carry on with you uh, and to help them to make that decision that will be uh, helpful, okay? Um, it, before we end, we just have a minute. Is there any questions that you have? Any questions, any thoughts, any, um, uh, any, uh, any, yeah, and any contributions, anything. Okay, so um, we'll we'll uh, uh, take a break right now, and we'll come back after ten minutes. We'll it's ten fifty. We will come back by eleven o'clock. See you then. <laughs> 